heard of climate change at least once. Humans are pumping out tons of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and heating up the earth. But have you ever wondered how these gases, like carbon dioxide, a one carbon and two oxygen atom compound, can cause so much trouble? Before we look into this, it is important to see what sources give out the most carbon dioxide. 4% of emissions come from industrial processes, 9% from deforestation and land use, and finally, 87% from the burning of fossil fuels mainly for energy use. From these fossil fuels, three sources are most popular. Natural gas, petroleum or oil, and coal. What makes these fuels so special is mainly due to the specific organic molecules that they are comprised of mostly, hydrocarbons. In short, hydrocarbons are compounds that only contain hydrogen and carbon bonded through covalent bonds and can seemingly form limitless combinations and chains. One example includes this 7-carbon alkane hydrocarbon called heptane. So, how is energy gained from these hydrocarbons? In short, the forming of new bonds releases more energy in the form of heat than needed to break them. For example, assuming this is a clean combustion, approximately 100 grams of heptane needs 6,560 kilojoules of energy to break the CH bonds, 2,082 kilojoules for CC bonds, and 5,434 kilojoules for the double bonded oxygens. In return, this formation of 7 carbon dioxide compounds releases 11,186 kilojoules and 7,360 kilojoules for the eight water molecules formed, netting a total of 4,470 kilojoules of energy. With this carbon dioxide gas formed and escaping into the atmosphere, how does it heat up the Earth? To understand this phenomenon, we must look at the Sun, the Earth and natural frequencies. Everything has a specific range of frequency where electromagnetic radiation causes the object to resonate. Now looking at this moment right now, sunlight, comprised of multiple electromagnetic frequencies, especially visible light, is being emitted towards Earth. This electromagnetic radiation doesn't vibrate that much carbon dioxide as it has mostly a higher frequency. Thus, this radiation continues down to Earth. Now the sunlight is absorbed and re-emitted back to the atmosphere by the Earth in the form of lower infrared radiation. When we look closer at this carbon dioxide compound, we see that it starts to vibrate and re-emit thermal energy. Because carbon dioxide has three atoms, it allows itself to vibrate in multiple ways. This vibration shown is the most common out of the two other ones. However, carbon dioxide isn't the only one that vibrates. Other greenhouse gases include methane, nitrous oxide, CFCs, HFCs, and HCFCs, and even water. Even though water naturally condenses, the release of more greenhouse gases causes more water to evaporate, exasperating climate change. These greenhouse gases are a natural and need part in the atmosphere to keep the Earth warm enough. However, we humans as a species are releasing too many of these greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which the Earth can't reabsorb, and thus we are heating the Earth way too much. With many of these greenhouse gases lasting over 100 years in the atmosphere, or longer, our option to solve this problem are to break down greenhouse gases, and most importantly, lower emissions. Time is ticking and the duty to safeguard our and the next generation's future lies in our hands.